not gonna lie. I actually have a piece of paper. Everyone's attention, please. Bling, 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 bling. And I don't have a glass of water. Come on, there you go. Awesome. Thank you. Great, thanks guys for coming today. Um, those of you who don't know me, and there's not a lot of you, my name's Alvain. Um, I'm one of the owners of White Rabbit Gaming. And uh, today is a really monumental moment for the White Rabbit Gaming brand as we officially launch our first uh, professional gaming house for, um, for our Dota 2 team um, in South Africa. It's the first of its kind, never been done before uh, in the country. And we're proud to share this moment with you guys. Um, and we're really happy to have the guys here as well to share that with you. So whenever you get a few minutes with, uh, with them, uh, please take the time, ask them some questions. They have been living in the house since May. Um, don't ask me how we've managed to keep, keep this under wraps for so long, um, but the guys actually did a really good job of that. Um, I just want to take you through a few slides. I want to tell you a little bit about White Rabbit Gaming, about what we do, about where we are going. Um, and you would see also that we invite quite a broad range um, of individuals. That can um, that's that's actually in the industry at the moment. That's making a difference to the industry at the moment, and uh, we we're thankful that all of you could make it. So um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the global scene, a little bit about esports numbers. Got a few stats here for you as well, and then just also talk about why exactly did we decide to to start a gaming house and why we thought the South African market is actually ready for this. Uh, when you look at audience growth, that's your pro projections that you are running. You're sitting with about 190 million occasional viewers for esports globally, um, and 145 million uh, constant watches of esports. And when you look at esports revenue growth as well, that's where the money sits. Okay, that's where uh, you know call a spade a spade. Okay, all of you guys that's invested in esports, that's where you are looking towards in terms of investing within this industry. And it is growing. There's a lot of brands that's getting involved. There's a lot of people that is getting involved and doing a lot of mileage in order to get this to lift off in South Africa as well. And we at White Rabbit Gaming feel that by actually putting our money where our, ma our, money where our mouth is and uh, investing our own cash into the industry as well and setting up a permanent residence for these guys and believing in their dreams and their goals, that the rest will follow as well. This is just some predi pr predictions that, uh, that has been going on over the last past years as well. So we see um, this is just esports revenue growth for 2014, 15, and 16. And they did some predictions as well uh, towards the end of last year about what the numbers are going to be in 2019. And that number they had to revise three times during 2016 because esports was just growing so fast. And the prediction on revenue couldn't actually keep up. So the latest numbers that we have is about $1.1 billion uh, industry that it will be by 2019. I do think that that will be revised again quite soon. And uh, then the country that will lead it, we know Ch uh, China and South Korea, they're quite big markets, uh, massive audiences, and generally leading the esports industry as well. We also see major brands in South Africa and some in Europe as well starting to invest in esports. Uh, some well-known things uh, uh, we see media companies starting to invest in esports. We see Manchester City, these various uh, soccer clubs that started picking up their own e-athletes as they sent them. We recently had one at one of the VS tournaments that also got flown out here because the price pool was actually noticeable. Um, we see that uh, Astralis, Audi partnered with Astralis. I mean, uh, this is car dealer, a, a car manufacturer that's actually starting to invest in, in the industry as well. Uh, Coca-Cola, and then also pulling it closer to home, Kaiser Chiefs and Pirates. Even they got on the, on the, um, into the esports scene now at the moment as well. And I remember speaking to them at, at Rage last year where they said, look, this is a very exciting industry, but we're just not 100% sure on how to get into it. Um, we spoke about it. They obviously went and did their own homework as well. And now we've got our first recognized esports signed by major brands. And the question is not if anyone else. The question is when will everyone else get on board? And what we have found in the industry that brands that are getting into esports quite quickly are the ones that's busy benefiting from it already. There's major equity being built and there's major investment going on um, and relationships being built with the brand and the consumer as well. The trick for you as a brand is identifying how to get involved. It's not when to get involved. So if you're a brand like, for instance, Coca-Cola or, or if you're a consumer brand, um, you don't necessarily have to sponsor a tournament, but find your niche. Okay, speak to the guys that work in the industry and see how you can actually get involved and make a difference. So, with major brands looking to invest in esports, it's quite important to have that structure and that solidity and showing that you can actually run an organization, that your organization's 
stable, that it's sustainable, and that you can continue moving forward. Because there's no ways that anyone would invest in an industry without the knowledge that there's going to come something from it, or that it's going to have some kind of sustainability. And that is where White Rabbit Gaming decided now to, um, to actually get involved. So just a little bit about White Rabbit Gaming. We're an organization um, that's started by three, three, three guys that just loves gaming. It's myself, Olvang, uh, then Wayne Edwards, who's, uh, who's our financial guy, and uh, then Martin Bierkes, who unfortunately couldn't be here today as well. Wayne also can't be here, he's working. Um, but the three of us, essentially, we love esports. We saw what it does to spirits. We see how, how positive the effect is that this is having on people, on their lives, and just generally in community. And we decided that, you know what, we want to invest in this, and we want to build that future with these guys. And uh, we literally have one goal in mind. And our main goal is um, to, to actually grow esports moving forward and just get people to, to watch esports, because we did see there's a link between people watching esports and participating. Um, the challenges that we are facing at the moment is that people don't really understand what it is, especially the older generations um, don't really get it. But I think the more that we engage with them, the more that we explain to them, and more importantly, the more inclusive we are, the better it will be for the industry moving forward. So as I said, we've got one goal, and that's to grow the community through participation and encouraging viewership and attendance of gaming or esports events. I think a lot of you guys trying to... Um, to get viewerships in um, and get attendance up, that is currently our biggest challenge. And I do think that when more brands get involved, when people actually see this thing is exploding, that is where the true value will come from. Come from. There's a bunch of exciting um, developments happening quite soon, uh, towards the end of the year, that, that you guys can keep an eye on. Um, take note of this, because this is your new industry. The generation that everyone is trying to get hold of, your 18 to 24 year olds, this is where you need to focus. And if your brand is scared to actually step into that 18 to 24 year old space, you seriously need to revise your strategy and look at where you're going, because that's the future of your industry and the future of gaming as well. <clears throat> so looking at our history, we actually started in 2010. We're, we're actually quite old, so about um, seven years. And we started out as a, as a casual guild on World of Warcraft, which many of you might know. Um, a lot of us lost a lot of hours and of our lives on that game. Um, and we rapidly built our community um, to over 100 people in a very short space of time. And when StarCraft 2 came out, we decided, you know what, we, we all love StarCraft. We want to expand into this title. We started playing and realized we're not half bad at the game. So Martin and myself, we got on board, started uh, entering competitions. And when we applied to various organizations, we actually got rejected because we were so terrible at the game. And uh, we realized very quickly that back then it was a very elitist industry. So there was not really a lot of space to encounter and interact with people. I had to get a coach from the US to actually coach me because no one locally wanted to coach me. Um, and we decided, you know what, this is what we want to build the brand around. We want to build the brand around community and focus on getting more people into gaming and just getting more people to play games. In 2013, we hosted our first online tournament, uh, which was called the Year in Meltdown Cup, which happened in November after Rage when everything died down. We established our presence on social media and we even got international players to start playing in our tournaments as well. So we uh, got guys from Sweden, the Netherlands, United Kingdoms. In one of our tournaments, some of the guys from My Insanity. Um, played in there as well, and that essentially really helped getting uh, get our community started and kickstarted it in a really nice way. Uh, moving on in 2014, we got our first sponsorship in the in the name of uh, uh, Logics Design and Development. They still work us today. They sponsor all of our um, Teamspeak service, which we're terribly grateful for. Um, and the community just continued growing. So we have zero limitations on how many people can join. We upgraded our server twice already with the amount of people that's joining, which is a great space to just encourage people to log on and find someone to play games with. We also had our first appearance at the DGC. We ended top eight, um, and then we also had a presence in Battlefield, which was quite a celebratory moment when, uh, when we actually made it to DGC because it's the first time that we really um, played in a tournament that big. And we realized that we really do like it. Uh, we love the competitive scene, and the competitive scene, if you've ever been to a big event, you'll know that it's, the vibe there is, is, is really, really great. In 2015, we established as a PTY Limited, and we decided, you know what, we need to do this properly. Uh, esports is growing, and we need to uh, properly do this as a, 
um, as a company moving forward. And we started supporting the Rondebosch High School CSGO team as well when they played their national um, championships. We picked up the guys from Newbie, who's uh, currently here with us today as well. They impressed us when we saw them play at the Gigabyte Challenge in 2015. Um, and we brought them on board and then literally everything. So we had Heroes of the Storm that year, which is a pity it didn't uh, grow any further. But overall, a really good year for White Rabbit Gaming and we ended on quite a high. But that wasn't all. So 2016 came along, the Masters was announced, all of us uh, jumped on that bandwagon. We also picked up ASUS and, uh, and Intel as our sponsors, ASUS being our main sponsor at the moment. Guys, thank you very much for being here. It's really awesome having you here and thank you for your support over the past two years as well. It's really been a good ride so far. Um, we've had multiple first and second place finishes throughout various tournaments online as well as LAN and then also the winners of Rage 2016 which was uh, the biggest prize pool ever announced in a South African tournament. So really establishing and once again White Rabbit Gaming building on that 2015 success having the best year that we've ever had. But once again we didn't stop there. So 2017 arrived and uh, we had to make new plans, so what are we going to do to build on 2016? And cool ideas came on board, so uh, where's Cesar? Sorry, there we go. <laughs> Cesar, thank you very much as well. It's, uh, so they've been providing us with all of our fiber connections. We've got a 100 meg um, line up and down at all of, our, uh, all of our base stations. And then also over and above that, they offered to give every single one of our um, players a 50 meg up and down line, which is ideal for streaming, downloading, watching streams, really really taking care of the needs so the guys don't have to worry about that which also goes a long way we continued the growth of teams uh, um, as you currently know we won EGE at the end of July as well so the guys maintained their crown so we've got the trophy when you go through the house you can have a look at it again um, and apart from that we keep having our eyes on the future so what next we're constantly thinking about how we can grow this community and what's next is our expansion into the European, um, American and Asian markets. So no one knows about that. That's something that was only known to the White Rabbit Gaming management at the moment. And uh, we discussed it with the team as well. But that's where our next eyes um, are going to be focused on. So expanding into these markets within the next couple of years. And then also we've got something major coming for the local scene as well, which you can keep your eyes on. We're looking for partners. I'll say that open and honestly. But uh, this is an industry that's taking off. If you want to be part of it, you want to be part of it right now. So this is just 2017's achievement so far. You can see multiple first places there. Um, and then also in terms of TV appearances, brand exposure, things like that, we've been there. And then the Gaming House launch, which is probably one of the biggest announcements that we made this year. So how did we get here? I'm going to show you just a few stats. This is the chart that we got from, uh, from the, one of the electronic reports as well. And what this basically tracks is viewership with participation within esports. And uh, Fabian Malant, uh, manager of Unicorns of Love, said, as one of the fastest growing sports in the world, esports only lacks exposure and deeper understanding. And this was said about two or three years ago, and he could not have been more correct. As soon as we start talking and engaging with those around us and asking questions, then that will grow because people will start to understand why this is actually a recognized sport. Showing you some, some numbers as well. So this is just uh, looking at active players. I started only tracking this from 2010. Uh, I could go back way further, but the numbers are really, really small. But you can see there's been a significant increase in terms of, uh, of players, active players that actually play in some kind of championship. By the way, these numbers are only the major tournaments that were tracked. Um, and as you can see, 2017, these numbers only go up until about May, June. So it doesn't include the international, it doesn't include anything after that. And when you look at esports earnings as well, um, 2016 saw a record here with 95 million US dollars being awarded globally in terms of esports prizes. This is across various titles. But it is growing, um, but I think what is happening at the moment, I'm going to show you another chart around that, is that people are getting a lot smarter in terms of investing in esports. And where South Africa actually ranks on that, you can see from 2010, we, have, we, we were sitting at 52nd, 51st, dropped off a little bit in 2012. From 2014 onwards is really where the community and the industry started taking off within the country. And within 2017, at the moment, we're sitting 40th, ranked 40th in terms of esports earnings. Out of 119 countries, that's not half bad. Our players are ready, our players are good, and our players need investment and support behind them in order to go to that international scene. 
What I tracked here was also the number of tournaments being held and then also the average winning per tournament. And what you will see here is that from 2015 until 25, 2010 to 2015, people were trying to figure out what the hell this esports thing is. They know there's money in it, okay? They see that there's some kind of return on investment on it, but how do we actually start structuring it, for the lack of a better word? And what you can see is from 2016 and 2017, the number of tournaments being held has declined, but your prize pools have increased. Because people realize that it's not necessarily about how many tournaments you host, but it's actually about hosting meaningful tournaments. Having a tournament that you can actually associate with, getting the attendance there, and not just spamming, but becoming smart with the way that you position your tournaments as well. Now, current numbers, just showing you a few stats, $280 million, that's the total country earnings since 2010, or what all countries have earned um, in esports in terms of winnings. $217 million is the total sum for the top 10 countries. So there's currently a skill gap that needs to be covered, and we can't do that without the investment as well. $82 million, top 100 player earnings combined, so that's a lot of rich kids, and why I'm saying kids, is because all of them are between 18 and 25 year olds that's earning all of this money. Uh, top 10 player earnings combined, around about $22 million. And then South Africa's position in the global ranking across 116 countries is 51. Once again, really not bad for an industry that, you know, Blizzard, Riot, Valve, none of those guys currently is willing to actually step, stand forward and invest in the infrastructure that will benefit us moving forward. So our guys are really, really doing well. This was the interesting bit. So when we look at player earnings distribution by age, 85% of those winnings were to people aged between 18 to 25 year olds. Our entire Dota team is within that range as well. Look at your entire esports industry in South Africa. I would say 90% of your players are sitting within that age range. This is also the age range which they call the millennial, millennials, the generation um, Y and Zs, the generation which is an absolute nightmare for marketers because they don't know how to reach these guys, they don't know how to engage with these guys, and they've got a lot of questions around the longevity of these markets. And uh, that's an area where White Rabbit Gaming has a lot of expertise in. Uh, we know the market quite well, we know what makes them tick, and that's why we decided that we actually need to move forward and invest behind these guys. This is a chart looking at your MMR, so those that are not familiar with MMR, that's your matchmaking rank, and that will determine how you actually um, get paid against international players. And there's three points on this graph that I want you to take notes of. The first one is your average MMR for the top 10 Dota 2, country, or top 10 Dota 2 countries in the world, and that's across 2.1 million players. Your average MMR is about 3,300. 3, okay, when we look at South Africa, it's quite close to that, it's about 2,900 MMR. When we looked at our Dota team's MMR, we're sitting on 6,510, which puts the Dota 2 newbie team from White Rabbit Gaming in the top 0.09% of skilled players in the world. Okay, these guys have got talent, and we need to invest behind that. <clears throat> so when we look um, at I took a little bit of a bastardized version of uh, Maslow's hierarchy of need in order to, to make sense of this. So I'm a typical marketer in that sense. And at the base, we need the player support and infrastructure. And your industry cannot move ahead without that. For years, we had teams looking after themselves that had to fend for themselves. Um, recent, re well, actually this year and towards the end of last year, only did we see um, investment coming through in terms of getting players to events. But it's really important to support these guys and that they have the ability to make a career out of this. That will be the main focus for all of the organizations, I would say, within the next 18 months. Uh, there will be investment into other areas as well, but I think if, you, if, if there's one area that will get a lot of attention, that is where it will be. Your second area is your tournaments and events, and that we've got down to a T at the moment. And that's actually the reason why I invited a lot of you um, here today. So, um, Barry from Metal State, um, Rob from uh, VS Gaming, uh, Luca from Arena. All of you guys have done an amazing job at establishing a solid platform where players can actually start earning a decent uh, entry level salary, for the lack of a better word, if they're really good at it. But we can't stop there. We need to continue investing in this to establish that, um, that tier. Oops. 
The, se the third area is viewers and audience. And I think this is the bugbear of a lot of people because this is what you get evaluated on and this is where people actually say, well, show me your return on investment. And I think the one area that we're struggling with is that I'm watching TI with seven of my friends at my house. But essentially in terms of viewership, I'm only counted as one. I want to say this very tongue in cheek, but I don't think that's a very accurate reflection in terms of evaluating the success of esports. What I would look at is the number of players that we have in South Africa and how those numbers increase during and after big tournaments. And what you will see when you actually pull that data, you will see an increase in participation and you'll see an increase in viewerships as well. Not only in the local scene, but international tournaments as well. So I think that brands investing in esports have started getting it wrong if that is what they evaluate on. So that's something to keep in mind as well. I think we're actually doing fine. The second last one is sponsorships. We're doing that quite, quite all right at the moment as well. A lot of brands are coming in. We've got a lot of brands sponsoring teams at the moment already, and you are seeing the benefit of that. So there's no, no issue there. The last one is actually making that career out of esports, and this is where we're falling short. And that's, I think, because we don't have that player support and infrastructure. There's not enough brands investing within this industry. And what that is, what has left, has left us with is actually the MGO owners having to establish that and carry that moving forward. As soon as we get that, we can actually establish that career for these guys, that they can start earning decent salaries, that they can start going overseas, traveling, and building their dreams that they had initially. But nothing can happen in terms of that if all of the other elements are not working together. So all of this led to the realization that they need a specific environment in which to further enhance their skills, and that is the reason why we built the gaming house. Um, the guys, we've, when they joined the gaming house, we've already seen an improvement in the MMR ratings as well. Um, performance, you can just go and follow these guys on social media, you will see that they are doing phenomenally well. Um, so establishing schedules, establishing an environment on where they can actually flourish, it's well worth investing into. So that's all of the, all of the information that, uh, that I can give you around this. But before we go, I really just want to say thank you to a few, to a few people. The first one is, is obviously our main sponsor. So um, ASUS, uh, Republics of Gamers and Strix, guys, thank you so much. The investment and relationship with you guys have, have been an amazing one. And we look forward to uh, a long time and a long-term relationship with you moving forward. Cool ideas. You can't play online games without good internet. So, guys, thank you so much. It's really, really great having you guys here as well um, and your investment. Logix Design and Development, um, you can't communicate unless you have TeamSpeak servers. So, they give us that. Our teams and our players, guys, yeah, with that, as, as we've said from the beginning, there's, there's two things that you need as an MGO. You need players and you need your community and your fans. And uh, so, thank you for your dedication and your hard work as well. It doesn't go unnoticed. And uh, then also our fans and our followers. Without this, without you guys, this would be a really, really boring ride. And then just two last people that I want to thank is, uh, is Wayne and Catherine. So where's Catherine? There we go. So come join me here. So this is Catherine. Um, I, know that, uh, <laughs> I know that we take a lot of shine um, from this, but uh, around today, Catherine was pretty much the brains behind this. So she had all of the marketing material printed. She was key in helping the design the house. And then thank you as well for the property that these guys can actually spend some time in. <laughs> so uh, without these two people, the gaming house would definitely not have been a possibility. So I would just like to give them a big round of applause. <laughs> so that's it. Um, thank you for your time. Um, there's, there's drinks around here. The, the gaming house is literally around the corner. I'll take you through there now. Please spend some time there, have a look, explore. Uh, the guys asked just don't check under their beds, Ryan, uh, or anyone else. So, uh, but uh, feel free to explore, spend some time with the guys, get to know them, um, and just hear what makes them tick. Uh, and then there's some drinks and food, please help yourselves and have a good afternoon. Cool. Cool.